This week's episode of the Shrink Tank podcast is brought to you by Pixel Eyewear. These stylish designer computer glasses are made to filter artificial blue light produced by screens that we use every day. These glasses may help protect our eyes from strain and could lead to better sleep. To save $5 off your first pair, use the coupon code SHRINKTANK. If psychology and pop culture had a baby, they'd call it Shrink Tank. A new paper reveals more intelligent people are quicker to learn and unlearn. 90% chance that there's some like, weird animal out there. Yeah. Stern's been doing this forever. And far more extreme. From Nashville and Charlotte, this is the Shrink Tank Podcast. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining us. We have a big show today. It's our 100th episode. All right. We're going to be talking about strangest things. It's the weirdest things in pop culture. We also have a little bit of roundup where we predict the future. That's in our last segment. But first, let's meet our panel. Dr. Emma Kate Wright is here. Hello, Emma Kate. Hi. And so let me ask you. We've been doing this thing for 100 episodes. You've not been necessarily since the beginning, but you've been pretty consistent. What has been some of your favorite experiences of the podcast since the time you've been on it? Well, I think it's been interesting because I actually tried to find there was one really random episode for a podcast that I was on in like 2015 before I was even here Um, and I I could not find that but I did find the most the first episode that I was on and it was hilarious because Frank was freaking out about his finger (laughs) because he had chopped part of his finger off with a carrot slicer he circumcised his finger (laughs) and so I was just like and this is about what almost all of the podcasts have been is Frank freaking out about something? <laughs> so, um, my so, yeah. finger still hurts. It doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Still hurts. It's two Adult years ago. circumcision is not pretty. Okay. <laughs> we call it the Frank Freak Out Podcast. Yes. that's what basically what it should be. It yeah. should be just you yeah. freaking out for a hundred episodes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, speaking of Frank, Dr. Frank Gaskell is here with us. And Frank, any like memory that stands out? Any experience that stands out on the podcast so far? Well, a couple of things uh, going back and listening to Desiree Festa. Like, oh my gosh, we just roasted her constantly because she wanted to be so serious. But the funny thing is the very first podcast, I just clicked on a random one and slid to the middle of it. And I was talking about a space elevator. I couldn't believe it. So I'm thinking oh, yeah, I probably shocked. talk about the space elevator a lot. I, I'm assuming. Well, probably. Fr- Frank talks about certain things a lot. <laughs> it's the the uh, funny thing with Desiree is she loved the podcast and she wanted to help us. She, so she came in before she was even on the podcast. She would come in and write with a squeaky marker on a whiteboard to give us like notes as we were going. <laughs> well, and I remember one time, she, yeah, she crawled to show a uh, to show like a note she had written like we're videoing it and she didn't want to be in the shot. And I'm like, right. why are you on the floor? Like, are you, this is this is uh, <laughs> this is audio. audio. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, Jonathan Hederley rounds out the panel. And Jonathan, how about you? Any any fun memories that stand out? Well, I think the podcast itself is another confirmation of Frank's FOMO because he originally was not a part. Of this podcast, and all you have to do is exclude Frank, and then he wants in. Right. And so, you know, everybody that works here is, <laughs> has adopted that mindset. Like, you want something? Well, just tell Frank you don't want it, or he can't be involved in it, and then it happens. I do. I do say I miss. I miss being the psych weasel and having the little animal. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. By the way, the psych weasel came out of Frank and Craig having a beer or 12 at a party <laughs> and and deciding that this was the funniest thing they'd ever heard of was the psych weasel and actually buying the domain name psychweasel.com wow. without asking anybody or, or, or bringing it up or like was this a good idea it just became a thing in a sort of semi-drunken state so well, Frank that, is still laughing about lie. it. <laughs> how, many, how many domains have you purchased over the years, Frank? There's no telling, but I'll tell you, I have that photo from that night of the Psych Weasel night, and we should put that up on the website with the podcast. <laughs> we should. <laughs> That'd be that, hilarious. That's a good idea. 
the 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 birth of the psych weasel. <laughs> well, uh, Jonathan, what stories have you found for us in the first segment that we call Being Human? Well, there's evidence that fear influences how conservative and liberal views folks take on. So social scientists have long known how to turn liberals into conservatives. All they have to do is scare them. Now, new research suggests the opposite is also true. A recent experiment showed that making people feel completely safe can temporarily change their politics and make them more liberal. So, Emma Kate, how much do you think fear factors into how liberal or conservative people are? You know, it's interesting. I thought this was kind of a unique read where, you know, it seems like, and I'm going to make kind of a blanket statement here, liberals seem to want change, while conservatives, they're afraid of change. And there's been a lot of research from a brain-based perspective that's come out for conservatives where uh, apparently they tend to focus more on the negative. They have a stronger physiological response to threats, um, and they also fear new experiences, and their brains are more reactive to fear. So I think this this kind of notion that being afraid drives your political agenda is really accurate. So, um, but, but again, I don't quite know how this works other than kind of going back to that original statement where conservatives are just afraid of kind of changing the, from the status quo. Well, now well, there's a lot of studies that have like uh, people, liberal and conservative, and they would look at pictures and some of the pictures would be like a puppy or a meadow, or some, a waterfall, and then other pictures would be like a creepy spider, or a car accident, or a nuclear bomb explosion. And people that were self-reported conservatives would always look at the scary, creepy thing for longer. They would, they would track their eye gaze. And so their brains are more wired toward the thing that feels threatening. And when they feel threatened, then they become more authoritarian and they become afraid of people that are different and they become afraid of change. And so they want social order. They want like kind of law and order stuff. And they 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 don't want those darn foreigners around and that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's absolutely there's a lot of evidence around that. Well, now, f recently we talked on the podcast about how our beliefs or our views have changed over time. And Frank is maybe one of the people I know that's the most fearful and, you know, apocalyptic, you know, the world is going to hell in a handbasket, get, get off my lawn. And yet he has adopted more uh, moderate to liberal views over time. So are you less afraid, Frank? No, I've just pretty much given up. You've given like, up? I have no control over anything. <laughs> so I'm just like, all right. Yeah. I, I think your forehead. you Godzilla, accepted. cool, yeah. you know, yes. whatever. Your uh, your hairstyle <laughs> confirms you have no control over anything. I, mean, I used to be crazy conservative, like like shocking conservative in the eighties, and I don't know why I changed. I, I really I have I have no earthly idea. I think maybe I learned to think. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, so Frank, <laughs> if you had a scale from let's say one to five, and one would be highly conservative and five would be highly liberal. Where were you? you? So you were a one, I mean, a five before. No, what did I say? One is conservative. <laughs> <laughs> that Mr. Dave's David? memory problem right in the middle of my own sentence. I forgot what I was saying. Uh, so a one would be conservative. You would start off as a well, one. Where would you put yourself now? Let me give you a couple data sets. I mean, a, a couple right. data points. I believe marijuana should be legal in all states. I think kids should be able to drink at 16, but I don't think we should spend hardly any money on the Department of Education. And the military okay. is too big. And so he said he's thinking now? Is that what he said? Like, but I learned to think? Guns need to be reduced. So, yeah. And I think we give too much that, money to the earth. So he's all over the place, basically. <laughs> to the well, earth. Are you sure we you haven't, much money you haven't been smoking the weed there? I'm just saying. But I personally wouldn't that smoke would, pot. That would put you about a four. I, I would personally so, recommend you never smoke yeah, pot, Frank. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Wobot is an artificially intelligent chatbot designed using cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, and it, which is one of the most heavily researched clinical approaches to treating depression. A recent controlled study showed promising results, indicating that talking to a chatbot can reduce the effects of depression. Frank, do you think talking to an artificially intelligent chat box can help a person's mental well-being? Well, I am finding that out. 
I am using Wobot, and I find it really funny to say the word Wobot because it's like I have a hard time talking. <laughs> Wobot. <laughs> but it's a face Quank. <laughs> My name is Quank. I'm using a Wobot. Um, but you you sign up with Facebook, and it gets some of your information. And then it asks, do you want to do this stuff? It gives you a little education about CBT, but it checks in with you every day about your mood, where you are, uh, why you're feeling. D- does it want to talk to you a little bit? What you're wearing. So it's – but I, I will tell you, I had a little bit of an emotional response to it because I'm answering all the questions. And it said, thanks, Frank. Here's a, a baby – hedgehog for you. And a little gif of a baby hedgehog came up being petted. And I was like, oh, that's nice. And then it said, do you know that I'm a robot? And I said, yes. And we had this little talk. So I don't know. The jury's <laughs> <laughs> just like, I feel like we just... I kind of felt like... <laughs> I feel like we just got a glimpse of Frank on Tinder. Oh, my God. We just got a little bit of access to Frank's private world, and it was scary. That's that's what does it for you, Frank, huh? A little hedgehog on my robot. Oh, my gosh. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, it was, it was kind of cool. It, it, I felt uh, like it kind of I don't know if- was a, a thing. Okay. There was a, Frank's the best one. For there that. was a connection. Frank about had an affair with with. Uh, remember when Alexa, Alexa first came Alexa. out? Alexa. Yeah, Frank had this emotional affair with Alexa for like. She's months. still in my office. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know she is. <laughs> <laughs> she's in your she's in your dungeon. Oh man. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, oh, Frank. Boy. Frank gets easily attached to technology for sure. Yeah. Well, I I will say that I think it's going to be a thing, but it's never going to get rid of our real jobs. And the Wobot said, be the sure Wobot. to talk to a real human sometimes, too. Mm-hmm. So I took that under advisement. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of really good stuff that could come out of that where, you know, when you think about barriers to treatment, a lot of times when I was working at the clinic and uh, graduate school, I had some clients that couldn't afford gas. It was kind of inconsistent. So they would miss appointments. If you're in a rural area where they, you don't have a lot of services, it could be good. Um, and it might even kind of reduce fear or embarrassment when it comes to talking about awkward or difficult things. So there could be some really good stuff that comes from it. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, she's going to try track my mood on a daily basis and where I am, and I'm assuming she's a she, because that just makes sense to me. You don't There's want a that. male Wobot? Hi, mm, Frank. No. How are Definitely. you feeling today? No. Yeah. I have a baby hedgehog for you. <laughs> you know I'm a Wobot, don't you? <laughs> uh, well, I tell you what, Frank, will you track your mood and then report your mood to us? Like, Can that yes, be but, part of another podcast? Yes, please. Yes, but she's tracking it for me. I don't have to do anything. You mean he, she? I know, but no. I'm saying, but you get you get a yeah. report, right? You can look at your mood over yeah. time and things like that. Okay, yeah, I'll share it, and that'll be. We'll have a conversation about Frank's mood, the ups and downs, and it tells you like when and why and all that stuff too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to look like a seismograph of the Pacific. It's going to be like tens and zeros and tens and zeros, <laughs> like earthquake, <laughs> monitoring North Korea's Pro- nuclear probably bombs. Yeah. Yeah, probably so. All right, very good. Well, I got to tell you guys, I am I am slightly jealous because I love Nashville, but I also feel like I'm out in, you know, like I, I, I'm in exile, and you guys get all the cool stuff. And I know that you guys got some cool things with these, with this Pixel eyewear, and I haven't even seen them yet. I don't even know what they are. Emma Kate, do you have it? Do you have a pair? Oh, I do. So for those who don't know, um, this week's episode of the Shrink Tank podcast is brought to you by Pixel Eyewear. And so they're these really cool, stylish glasses that are supposed to prevent blue light from affecting your eyes as much. And so blue light for um, people who aren't aware, it's artificial light that comes from devices. And so everyone spends so much time on their screen, like Frank and Jonathan, always attached to their devices. Is that why I I squint? Yes, okay. that is why you Blue squint. Light. has nothing to do with your ethnicity. <laughs> yes. Um, but no, but so, in, and essentially, these glasses are designed to help protect your eyes, whether that's um, from strain or from having 
the blue light, it impacts the, re- the release of melatonin, and melatonin is responsible for basically making you sleepy in the evenings. Um, and so these glasses have the potential to help impact your sleep. So I wore them, and I actually really like them. And Pixel was kind enough to send a bunch of these to people at the shrink tank. Um, and I know, Jonathan, you have worn them too, right? I have. What did you think? I squint less, but then my eyes are drier. No. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no, the interesting thing about them is um, my face is not designed for heavy glasses. No. So basically, it's like watching something slide down my face every three minutes and having to push it back up. But it is really interesting about how, this idea of like limiting or eliminating blue light in the in strain so Mm -hmm. it was something that took a little getting used to but mostly um it was just adjusting to you know being able to look at things and not feel sort of the strain and the headache so Mm -hmm. i want to try them but you should well but i have prescription oh okay and i think they did say that they're going to be bringing prescription lenses soon but they're not available yet (laughs) um but yeah and i found i'm sorry go ahead do you have them in there? Yeah, yeah, no, they're great. Our producer Sean is wearing them right now. I Sean, just... come around. Let, come to come to the the camera so I can see you. Yeah, he, see he's going to come like. take a peek at these glasses. So they do have a little blue tint to them, but yeah. typically um, they are they're fairly clear in comparison to other lenses that are out kind of in the market for this. So I'm not sure Dave is currently assessing Sean's face and the glasses. <laughs> You can't see you. I can too. They're pretty nice looking glasses. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. they're good looking glasses. You, they how make many as, did you get? We got a couple. I mean, and I think people we got several different styles. No, and a couple or several. Several. Yes, <laughs> yes. A couple see, means two. Couple means you're two. To spa- two. You're trying to spare me of of my FOMO, right? Uh-huh. Like this. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> like yes. this. Is, We've got to work this out where where Dave doesn't get left out of all the cool stuff. Yeah. Well, Dave, That's these the these glasses are only going to make you look even more like Janet Reno. So yeah. I, I I don't think. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If it if it makes you feel any better, I don't actually wear glasses in real life, but I felt really cool wearing them, except for the fact cool. that I kept thinking I was wearing sunglasses, and so I was awkwardly staring at people because <laughs> I didn't realize it's that like, they weren't they sunglasses. Don't, they can't tell I'm checking <laughs> them out. You stare at people what? wearing your sunglasses? Oh, yeah. That's fun. That's weird. Yeah. No, I love watching people. It's oh my great. Gosh. It's great. But you didn't realize that people can just see your eyes right. like normal. Yeah, no, I realized yeah. that because then they'd stare back at me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh yeah, wait, these are glasses. All right, Pixel eyewear. I want a pair. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try them on and personally, I'm gonna give the thumbs up or thumbs down. But I'm, I, from what you're saying, I'm intrigued. I definitely wanna, wanna try out a pair. And make sure before, before we forget, Dave. I'm sorry. Make sure that if you are interested in Pixel Eyewear, you can use our coupon code Shrink Tank to get five dollars off your first pair. And actually, on ShrinkTank.com, we're going to be doing an article uh, where we all kind of review them. So make sure you look for that. Sweet. Well, this week, Stranger Things season two drops, and we're all excited. In fact, we already have a watching party here in Nashville that we're going to watch as much as we can over the weekend. It's going to be very fun. And uh, so we decided to call our 100th episode Strangest Things. That's our trending topic today. And we're going to talk about some of the weirdest things that we've experienced in pop culture over the past couple of years. But before we get into that, let me ask if you have a strangest thing story that has happened to you. Jonathan, how about you? Any strangest thing that is just a personal story, something weird that's happened to you over the past couple of years? Oh, over the past couple of years, um, most people... Yeah, it could be any time. Yeah, well, most people already have heard my infamous Christmas Day outing to, uh, uh, you know, a nudist hot springs in the sixth grade, or uh, as a young adult in my 20s, swallowing a gold crown and then um, pooping in Ziploc bags for three days to <laughs> retrieve it. Wait, a crayon or a crown? A crown, a gold oh, crown. A, like a gold crayon. crayon. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I <laughs> yes, heard. I wanted, I wanted to collect my gold crayon <laughs> <laughs> that Willy Wonka had given me. Um, but I, I think the most recent weird thing that happened to me was I went to a head and the heart concert and right at the end of the concert, they went off stage for the obligatory encore. 
And five minutes turned into 10 minutes, turned into 15 minutes, turned into 20 minutes where they didn't come out and were clapping. And finally, somebody just comes out saying, due to unforeseen circumstances, the concert is over. And like the place was livid. I was livid. And it was only um, online in the next few days. We learned that a drunken buffoon had done a bomb threat to which at that point the the band couldn't come back out. So wow. it, that was a real but they, a bummer of an incident. But they left, let you stay there in the in the venue. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. They and, didn't and, evacuate oh, wow. you. And clap. We have a bomb threat, but we're yeah. not going to tell you. We're just, well, you know, we just value the band. So they're, <laughs> they're not coming back out. Yeah. That's the strangest part of the whole story is like they call, all, they won't let the band go on stage, but they'll let everybody stay in the venue for minutes on end. All right. How about you, Frank? The strangest thing that's happened to me actually in the last couple of years was with you and Hederly. And I'm going to use this uh, we word. We said we'd never talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use this word because that's what was on the billing. Oh, yeah. We went to midget wrestling. Extreme. Extreme. Oh, extreme midget wrestling. And tried to interview the professional athletes there. We got on the ground. And we as, did, I didn't. Well, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, you got his number, which is weird, but I, um, no, I did not get it. Wait, wait, wait. I did not get it. Sound like I was, <laughs> you, you got his was, email. <laughs> that was hitting on a midget. <laughs> right. Dave made small talk with him. Hey, no. Hey. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but I said I wanted to interview him for, for Shrink Tank. Right. And he Shrink said, okay, tank. He gave me his, <laughs> he gave me his email. But then he wouldn't. Then he wouldn't do the interview. Well, the strangest thing about it is, I was looking forward to it, and it was sort of out of body experience. I didn't know what I was going to expect. But when we were standing on the second floor, looking down on this little miniature wrestling like ring, I felt like the worst human being on the face of the earth. As you should. And that went away after about 15 minutes of chanting USA, USA, USA. But, yeah, that was the strangest <laughs> thing I have ever done. Well, well two, two quick things. One is the, yeah, the whole, um, um, like, patriotism sort of weird dynamic just reminded me. I went to a Trump rally as a joke. Oh, that yeah. was so weird. And I, I mean, disclaimer, if I actually ever thought he had a chance of winning, I never would have done that. So, but... The strangest thing about that evening, Frank, wasn't the extreme midget wrestling. It was watching Dave eat his dinner. That was the strangest the, thing. Before we went. Because we go disgusting. to this 50s diner and Dave's like, let me get a double cheeseburger <laughs> and let me get a milkshake. And, and then uh, for my side, <laughs> let me get two chili dogs. Yeah. But I also want fries or maybe onion rings. Uh, and then he nasty. ate it. He <laughs> ate it all. Ate all of it. Ate all of it. God, it was so gross. Hungry. <laughs> He was hungry. I know. I have a weirdly strange ability to to eat like enormous amounts of food. And it used to be I didn't gain a pound. And it's only been like in the last like seven years that I like I I can't it's, do that. It's without like, gaining oh, there's but the can, chili dogs. <laughs> I know. Then they all like it's like a zip file in my stomach. They just all like <laughs> uncompress all at once. But yeah, it was I, I can eat like huge amounts of food. I can't believe Dave just Dave just said zip file. <laughs> zip file. It's like a 1988 call. It's like an eight track in my back. <laughs> they still have zip files. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm the laser the, the reason... di I'm the laser disc of tummies. You know, I can just. <laughs> I had to send some something to Brandon and um, Dropbox wouldn't take it because it was. All in zip files. So, huh. yeah. So you use Western Union. It's still a thing. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. Emma Kate got something good for us. Oh, yes. So this, um, Dave has not heard this story, but Frank and Jonathan have. Happened very recently because before I was going to share a stalker story um, where I had somebody follow me in a foreign country, but I went to get a massage at a massage parlor that I had been to a couple times before <laughs> and, you know, really was fine. Anytime, it was very affordable. Wait, wait, wait. Anytime you go to a place called a massage parlor. <laughs> well, what else do you call it? Uh, you don't call it that. It's well, got like a nice name like Elements or 
But right. I'm not going to say that it's It's kind of like a spa, a mas- uh, or a uh, massage center, or uh, something, but not a uh, massage parlor. Asian spa <laughs> <Okay>. parlor. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's semantics. But regardless, so no, I, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Uh, so I went to was this there a place neon light <laughs> to get a massage. I had a lot of tension in my shoulders. I wanted yeah, to relax, did. and I go into the room. And for those of you who don't have never had a massage before, they tell you to disrobe to your level of comfort. So I get undressed and I get down on the table and um, some places provide either a blanket or a towel. And so I put the towel over my body and there is a giant wet spot on my shoulder and a spot on my hand <laughs> that I had touched. No, and no. I, I, in my mind, was just like, please no, please <laughs> no, no, no. And I, I get uh. up, I turn on the bright ugly light and there it is, folks. There it is, all oh, over this no. towel. And it really was a massage it parlor. It really was a massage parlor. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up having to file this... a police report. So that actually happened because there was a shooting. No, it did. There it was did. a shooting it there. It did. You so... should have been on the text chain. It was insane. Yeah, I I like texted people oh afterwards, and it was just unreal. So yeah, I ended oh up having gosh. to file a police report and. The woman was like super defensive, <laughs> saying I was like accusing her of lewd acts. And I was like, no, but you just didn't clean the room. And yeah, that's the problem. So, you didn't clean the room. It was it was a nightmare. It was the strangest thing it that has ever happened to me. <laughs> All I wanted to do was relax. So yeah, that's that not going to happen. Yeah, somebody relaxed a little too much. But, so well, I tell you what, I am never going to another massage parlor again. <laughs> not the parlors. Yes, yeah, I'm a, done yes, with massage parlors. The parlor. Man. Uh, yep. That's there's, one for the books. There's no top in that story. No. Nope. I'm not. Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm not even going to try on top Mm-mm. of that story. Mm-mm. All right. <laughs> So, with that, let's talk about the strangest things in pop culture. I don't know that we're going to... That might be our high watermark for the for the episode. But uh, let's talk about things that have happened over the past couple years since we've been recording. We've been recording for about two years now. And there's some really strange things that have happened in pop culture. Let's get the obvious thing out of the way. That Donald Trump is our president. I don't know if you've heard this, but, but Donald Trump is the president of the United States. So... I don't know that we can top that, but anything else that you guys think is an especially strange or or unexpected development in popular culture? Emma Kate, you got anything? Yeah, I mean, so for me, I remember there's this great meme on the internet about how if Britney Spears can make it through 2007, then I can make it through today because that was the year that she had her crazy <laughs> breakdown, shaved her head, just like went a little cuckoo, and yet. Now she's got a Vegas residency and she's making like $30 million a year. And it seems like she's got her life back together. And to me, I was just pretty shocked or surprised when I found out that was going to happen. So I thought that was pretty cool in a positive way, but Hmm. not expected. Yeah, Yeah, that's pretty weird. I'm, I think what's strange to me is now the eighties are back and I thought the eighties were sucked. So now it's – I'm surrounded by Star Wars and Stephen King and 80s-themed stuff. And that just feels strange to me, especially when I'm seeing these kids listening to 80s music, that it's just very bizarre to me that that has come back around. I didn't think we'd see that again. You know, I think even this summer, Despacito, um, this idea, which I think is cool, but I never would have guessed a song that's completely in a foreign language – would be such a worldwide phenomenon. And, and you even think of the of K-pop, Korean pop music, and how it's huge. My daughters listen to it. They don't know what they're saying, you know, but you, you have an entire song where they're singing it in a foreign language, and they memorize, they, they're able to memorize it, but they have no idea what's being said. You know, I got one other thing that I actually encountered this morning. And I think it's just with the advent of social media and we're all super connected, we know way more about each other than we really should. And I always just sort of assumed America was fairly intelligent, you know. And that's really changed this morning. 
when um, I saw a Facebook post about uh, the New Orleans Saints. There was uh, the NFL plane that carries the Saints between cities. The pilots waited for clearance. They were the last plane to take off, and they turned the plane off on the runway, got out of the plane, took a knee, and said, these thugs won't be going home until tomorrow. And people believe it. They believe that that happened. And I'm, no. I, it's, it's, I don't understand how people can believe this. That's so strange to me. But maybe that goes back yeah. to this conservative, liberal, fear-based stuff. But I just – I read it and I thought this is a total joke. Well, I'll tell you, I'm working on something uh, and it's going to take a while to do this. But, uh, you know, because I tend to be more politically moderate, I have a lot of conservative friends on social media and a lot of liberal friends. And I'm looking at some of the stuff that my more conservative friends uh, post and then – you know, like they're, they're reposting um, or retweeting or whatever, some um, story, and then I'll run down the story, and it's clearly, you know, a made-up thing. Or what they'll do is the, I, I have a couple of my Facebook friends that have other friends of theirs that when they post something, those friends jump in and go, yeah, and they say all these, like, real inflammatory things and about how the – you know, the, the liberals are killing the country and all that kind of stuff. And I've run down some of those uh, names. Like I've, I've clicked on them and back and back. And they're clearly made up people. Like they're not real people. Right. And yet the, the, the folks have, that I know have already accepted friend requests from them. Right. So right. They, they're, they're, they're in their friend list, but they're not even real. And so those people are kind of fanning the flames of it. Like who would have thought that would be happening? That kind of thing. That is crazy. Yeah, um, I'll tell you an interesting thing, and I don't think it's just the last two years, but it's certainly uh, been been increasingly true. Something that I think is a real unexpected, strange thing in pop culture is I think TV has in many ways surpassed movies in terms of prestige and quality. It used to be that TV was where fading movie stars or B-list actors went for their careers to kind of be on life support. And now it's like, you can get, I mean, you name it. There's, uh, I mean, Robert De Niro, Travolta, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, they're all making television. And then these series that are just outstanding, they're every bit as good game of Thrones and other series, every Westworld, every bit as good as, uh, the majority of feature films or, or, you know, the, the highest, uh, quality even compared to feature films. So I wouldn't have guessed that. Jonathan, is that something you would have ever thought like five, ten years ago, let's say, that that TV would have become the the place where the, the, the high quality, high prestige stuff was happening? No, and the other thing I wouldn't have expected is how um, you get certain actors and actresses that jump back and forth because Oftentimes people stayed in their their lane. So you think somebody like William Shatner, you would you think he is a television actor. And so, he, you know, or Michael Landon or these folks that would just jump from one vehicle to the next. And then you think of somebody like Brian Cranston that's had a, a you know, a huge, um, you know, hit with Breaking Bad. Then he gets an Oscar nomination you know, for film. And, and he's really been able, and a lot of actors and actresses are doing this now. They're jumping from television to movies to television to movies because of the way that even television has changed as anthology or single season um, or short shortened seasons, where, you know, where it's like six or eight episodes versus 22, 24 episodes. Yeah, it's, it's really surprising. Okay, here's another interesting development. You know, if you look at surveys of the country, the country is getting less, to use the term, religious. And people are are less uh, interested in traditional kind of religion and church attendance and kind of labeling themselves. And at the same time, we're seeing um, increasingly more spiritual, to use that term, spiritual themes, especially on television. Not so much in film, although somewhat, but television all over the place everything from the leftovers to american gods the good place i could go a long list that seems interesting to me that as people are getting more uh less interested in religion and in, in traditional kind of spirituality 
the, these spiritual themes are increasing. Any thoughts about that? Yeah, I feel like I would agree with that um, and, and that it is surprising. But then at the same time, I also feel like it's not because the traditional church is more conservative. And so it's not as open to homosexuality, LGBTQ plus. And um, so it makes sense that people are still trying to find that meaning in their lives without necessarily having to go to a church per se. So even though religion as a... Um, kind of the traditional notion of it might be down, I think it still makes sense that people are seeking that sort of spirituality. Yeah, and I think generationally there is a changing of the guard in terms of, you know, historically you would think of faith and religion as a certain place of worship and a certain set of rules, and it was really about going there a certain day, a certain time. The younger generation are rejecting that idea that like piety or spirituality has to be at a certain place and time. And so they've really modernized it in terms of online, you know, more and more church services and religious services are available online. But I also think culturally, whether it be uh, things that are going around around the world or whether it be this generation struggling with you know, happiness, stress, and depression is that people are looking for greater meaning and a lot of the things that they thought would provide a sense of security and happiness, they're, they're recognizing it's it's not delivering the goods. So they're, they continue to seek out things that hopefully give them a sense of well-being and peace. All right. Any other strangest things that you've seen over the last few years in pop culture that have really surprised you or are just weird? Any Any other themes or trends that you've seen? I shouldn't be surprised, but I still can't believe the Kardashians are a thing. But you know, whatever. Yeah, newsflash: they just got renewed for five more five more seasons, so they're they're staying around. And one of them made a four hundred and eighty one million dollars on cosmetics. Like, mm-hmm. like, come on, man! Jeez, they are a force to be reckoned <laughs> come with. Come on, man! <laughs> <laughs> that that great incisive commentary from Frank. All right. Well, you know, our first podcast dropped in uh, August of 2015, August 12th, 2015 to be exact. And let me tell you what was going on in August of 2015. It was when Jon Stewart signed off from The Daily Show. That was on August 6th. Uh, the big hits on the radio were Can't Feel My Face by The Weeknd, what Do You Mean by Bieber? Uh, cheerleader, remember that by Omi, that song, that cheerleader song? No? Do you yeah. remember, Frank? I don't remember music. I do. That was a fun one. All right. And See You Again by Charlie Puth. Um, so th- that was what was going on. The- that doesn't seem, I mean, that was only a couple years ago. Those Some of those songs are still getting airplay. Uh, and then movies, Straight Outta Compton, Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation, Ant-Man, and it was right before the TV season was getting ready to kick off. So you, you had America's Got Talent as the big show of the summer. You had reruns of NCIS and Big Bang Theory. So some of that stuff's still pretty much the same. So do you guys see two years from now? Let's skip ahead and we're looking at, let's say, November or late October, Halloween of 2019. You think things are going to be the same basic idea? You think there's going to be anything different? What predictions do you have for two years from now? Jonathan? Well, I think, uh, I don't know if I think or hope or both that um, kind of the oversaturation of either superhero films or retreads, and we've talked about this to death already, will finally kind of get back to a reasonable level I do think even when we talked about television being in its golden era, I think there's going to be a rise of science fiction film and television. You know, I think Westworld, I think Blade Runner 2049, I think Arrival, um, to where unlike the the superhero movies that really um, you need a large canvas of special effects to pull that off, they're going to start using those special effects towards more serious and adult kind of subject matters through science fiction to, I think, to commentate on today's world. Uh, so I just think that we're going to see the rise of that. The other thing I, th- I think we're going to see is the death of the bro comedy and the rise of more female-driven film. There's a real push, and I think rightfully so, of more creative uh, opportunities for women in terms of writers and directors. And I, I think in a couple years, we'll finally see 
the fruit of that labor. We, we may not see it here next year, but the time it takes to turn around a script and a, a film in a couple years, I suspect there's going to be a lot more female driven film. Okay, Frank, how about you? Okay, I've got a little bit of a list here. I don't think Trump will be president. I also think there will be significant civil unrest as a result. Civil? Civil. Civil. Yep. There will be clashes among the – I see the country getting even more extreme to the point of violence. I think video gaming will be full into virtual reality, that kids will be sitting in their room with their headsets. You mean porn into virtual well, reality? Well, that as well. And and actually, that's on my list. <laughs> of course it is. Because I think, <laughs> I think with this virtual reality stuff, people are going to be having sex – Vir- virtually like like there's going to be ways to do that somehow i don't know how but i think it's going to happen howard stern's going to retire yes i had to say that Very which means sad. frank will die six months after howard stern goes off the uh, air. actually a week after <laughs> and the last thing is i believe we will see an electric car self-driving from apple oh, that's interesting because i actually in two years Thought about electric as well with my predictions. Yeah, no, I I feel like there's going to be more electric cars out there for sure. And then I had other like stupid stuff that I'm hoping for, <laughs> like because yeah, they like perf- another royal wedding. They, they perfected <laughs> the watch, so the next thing they're going to perfect is the self-driving car. Way to go, Apple. Yeah. Another royal wedding. Yeah, That's I'm great. really excited about it. <laughs> I want there to be another royal wedding because I like to not focus on like all the political stuff because <laughs> I, I also predict that there will be an impeachment trial for Donald Trump. That's maybe what I'm just hoping for. And then that we will have nearly avoided World War Three. So, yeah, I think we're going to have a sort of like a West Wing ish show because I th- I think people are going to uh, look to late night still for where they're going to find their relief from Trump sort of the the like this is this is crazy stuff and we're joking about it but I think there's going to be a, a not not a push for drama that is like here's kind of more of the house of cards stuff but more of like Here's a picture of what we aspire to have, like what we want. And so something that's going to be kind of West Wing-ish, I think we'll see that in a couple of years. I think that's going to be how our culture is going to respond to it. That's my guess. All righty. Well, this has been a good hundredth episode. Let's give it up for us. Yes. Woohoo! And um, we hope that you've enjoyed it. We hope that you'll come back and tell friends about it. And uh, we look forward to the next 100 episodes, which should put us right smack in the middle of 2019. That's going to do it for this edition of the Shrink Tank Podcast. We hope you'll check out shrinktank.com for great articles and videos. We hope you'll follow us on Twitter at shrink underscore tank and also like us on Facebook. Our producer and music composer is Sean Beck. For Emma Kate Wright, Jonathan Hederley, and Frank Gaskell in Charlotte, I'm Dave Verhagen in Nashville. We hope you'll tell your friends about us and have a great week.